All right, what's going on there, folks? Thanks for checking back in here at the Earthmaster on this uh, Tuesday night. It is uh, about 11, 10 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity here on this Tuesday night. Uh, go back here to the Earthquake 3D Globe, see what we got. Uh, looks like a 3.5 here across areas of the Indonesia Islands region. One of the latest quakes also uh, looks like a 1.4 into the Nevada area. I'm uh, going to do a quick update here on the Iceland activity. Uh, as, you know, as you've seen here on the live stream, still seeing some uh, uh, lava fountains uh, occurring there northeast of Grindavik, Iceland. This is the little uh, article they put out here today. Um, it's starting to weaken, uh, according to the Icelandic Met office here. Uh, the lava has mostly flowed east from the eruption site, but there is also a lava tongue flowing west from the region north of uh, the area. Now, here's the fissure area uh, in the yellow line and the magma flow accordingly. Uh, there is a little channel down here uh, between Hagafell and uh, a little bit further uh, from that region. Let me see here if I can show you guys exactly. This uh, area, I think it's going to be flowing right into this channel, right? To me, it looks like there's two uh, different channels here around the Hagafell area, uh, two different lower regions of elevation. It looks like it's going, it will be going down this uh, area, uh, and that's if it continues to uh, uh, keep up there with the amount of uh, magma flowing to the surface, and of course the lava once it breaks through. Um, so we'll watch that. It's good. Good thing that's going this way instead of over here. That would put it more likely in the scenario to hit the Grindavik area, uh, but it's possible it could go down south here and out to sea uh, if it makes it that far. Again, uh, the latest information statement here uh, states that um, they on this article it says five vents, but if you go over here to this one, it says that there was three, uh, and this is from a a, a specialist remark. Um, the activity is now constrained to three craters, but was earlier five. So the event began, of course, with a powerful seismic swarm yesterday. Uh, obviously earthquake activity is dwindling. Uh, magma intrusion, uh, we'll have to watch, see if this increases. Let's see what else here. I, I covered this this morning, so it doesn't look like there's anything new in here. Uh, there is an increased likelihood that more vents may open along the original fissure as well as further north or south. Um, but we'll know, we'll definitely know about it, right? There'll be some earthquake activity. So things could stir up right here, um, you know, further down towards the Hogenfell area or further north. I'll continue to watch that. Let me check out the earthquake activity, see what we got here. In the last 12 hours, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, 13 earthquakes. That's not a lot. Things have definitely dropped off here dramatically uh, with the uh, earthquake activity. Um, let me go over here to live from Iceland. It's a really cool site. They got a lot of webcam set up here. Um, and this, it, it looks like it's zoomed in on one vent area. I don't know if there's still uh, other vents that are taking place here um, across the area. Um, but if that is the case, if it's only down to one, then obviously it looks like things are significantly, uh, dropping down in terms of the amount of magma making its way to the surface here. And even so, it just looks like it's barely, uh, uh, out of that crater. Yes, it is, you know, splashing up kind of high in the air, but not like we had seen, uh, before. So we'll continue to watch that in earthquake activity here. Um, let's zoom in here to the Greenvik region. I'm not seeing anything major going on downstream across the rift zone itself. That's the plate boundary. And there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity in general here across Iceland. Um, if we do, you know, like they mentioned, if we do uh, see some fissures opening up here, uh, new ones, uh, then obviously we'll see a major increase in earthquake activity right before the event happens. But right now things look calm, which is good news out there. Um, at least far as anything, you know, other than the activity we're seeing right now, it's just kind of, uh, staying, uh, low. All right. Uh, earthquake activity do have a little bit of movement up here in the Aleutian Trench. Uh, there was a, a little update put out here on this volcano up there along the Aleutian Trench. 
Um, of course, when the Aleutian Trench gets active, it seems like the volcanoes get active, right? Uh, we're right here, the Kanaga Volcano. Uh, they've updated here from a um, green to yellow. And that is due to the uh, a little bit of explosive activity here at the uh, volcano itself. Uh, let's see here. Daily update, informational statement. Um, let's go over here. Small overnight explosion and seismicity upgraded aviation color code and alert level to yellow uh, and advisory. So a small explosion uh, there at the volcano. Uh, previous eruptions here. Uh, well, that's the, uh, here it is, the Kanaga volcano down here. A small explosion was detected at the Kanaga volcano overnight, prompting uh, the site uh, to raise the aviation code. Uh, the event was detected in local infrasound and seismic data and was followed by increased earthquake activity. No ash emissions have been observed in the cloudy, partly cloudy uh, satellite images. Seismicity remains elevated above background but has continually declined since the explosion. Uh, so just kind of watching that volcano, right? Kind of popped up here uh, last night. Um, and that is in the area here um, around obviously other volcanoes out there. But it's in this little bend here along the Aleutian Trench where it, it looks like we definitely see some earthquake activity stirring up here. There's that uh, earthquake swarm up here at the volcano. Uh, but of course, I think, you know, uh, further subduction of this region here um, obviously over time will increase the likelihood of volcanoes here showing more activity. That's just kind of how the... Uh, whole subduction zone and the Aleutian Trench volcanoes out here um, behave. A lot of activity we see uh, throughout time. It, l these two earthquakes right here, uh, earlier this afternoon it looks like, early this evening, 4.7 and a 4.3. Now those are the more recent earthquakes. That could amplify potentially some conditions out here. Um, you know, seeing more of an uptick in the uh, uh, volcanic activity but we'll continue to watch that a uh, little swarm going on there and uh, some activity out here across the uh, a little bit further along the Aleutian Trench here near Perryville Alaska 3.1 uh, definitely seen some activity stirring up out here in the last 24 hours uh, so we'll keep an eye on the northern section there the Pacific Plate nothing going on here across the uh, Pacific Northwest I'm kind of Kind of wondering about that. I want to zoom in here to the Mount St. Helens area and see what we have uh, because they haven't even showed a peep or a squeak of an earthquake here in the last week or so. As you can see, uh, well, there's nothing showing up here as far as earthquake activity goes. Let's check out the gas emissions here. Um, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. Right there looks level. Sulfur dioxide, no extreme elevated events here, uh, which is good. Uh, earthquake activity, we'll zoom into the crater region, see if we can't pick out the correct one here. Yeah, there it is. A um, couple smaller earthquakes, see that? These two little spikes here, a couple ones, uh, or a couple ones, uh, a few other ones here. Um, so there is some earthquake activity taking place. Doesn't seem like they're caring about it. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything major going on here at the area. Um, Nothing like it was, right, uh, a month or so ago when we've seen uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up there. Uh, trimmer map here tonight. See what's going on here across the Cascadia Trimmer Department. We got 146 epicenters of Trimmer. It's a decent uptick. Not a huge uptick, but uh, compared to the past couple days. Around the Oregon area. Uh, almost the center port. Well, south central portion here of the... Uh, Cascadia subduction zone showing some trimmer. Not seeing any effects upstream as far as any earthquake activity, but no doubt the strain is building there along the Cascadia subduction zone. Out here across Sun Valley, Reno Sparks area, seen a handful of earthquakes as well. The latest one, a 1.4. Uh, there's quite a few fault systems up here. Uh, and occasionally they do get these little earthquake swarms, but not noticing anything unusual as far as any major activity goes for now. Uh, Southern California, pretty quiet for now. Uh, aside from some very small earthquake activity there on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. A look at the 2.5 map and above shows 1 2.9 uh, just about an hour or so ago uh, near the uh, San Bernardino Mountains here off of the plate boundary. 
uh, that earthquake coming in at about eight kilometers deep or so. Not for sure which fault system it is associated with, but uh, a little bit of movement up there in the mountain range. Got a lot of rain coming out here in the, uh, in the forecast for Southern California. We'll check that out here in just a little bit. Uh, some microquakes and movement going on outside of Pecos, Texas once again. Just, uh, it's always been like that for, uh, for a, a while now. These earthquake swarms are just consistent out there. Uh, a little bit of movement here outside the Kilauea Volcano here. This is a little bit newer. Uh, and in the, uh, in an area away from our major swarm area that we've seen over the past couple months. Uh, this area really hasn't seen as much activity as this region here. Uh, but this is the area that's showing right now. So let me go over here and check out the, uh, uh Hawaii Volcano folks here and uh, see what's going on with the inflation activity earlier this morning when we did the update that was uh taking a sharp rise in the inflation side uwe there we go that's uh last two days here pretty good uptick uh and of course that uh is continuing to rise here i don't see that slowing down so that means that we're going to be above the previous highest level of inflation in five years once that goes up above this little level here We've had, you know, numerous inflation and deflation events here in the last couple months. Each inflation event larger than the previous one. Uh, earthquake activity. Let's see what we got here across the region. And again, I think it, if we see any uh, fissures open up out here, we'll see a, a high increase in earthquake activity uh, take place before that uh, does. Uh, before that happens. Earthquake activity, generally light. A couple of smaller earthquakes shown up here on this graph, but uh, right now no major earthquake movement uh, to report there across the Big Island. Uh, further outside of the area here, let's see what we got. Uh, a couple of earthquakes north here, North Island region off the area, it looks like, into the Kermadec Trench, some deeper movement. Uh, and a couple earthquakes there into the Tonga Trench, it looks like. Uh, I'm starting to notice a seismic gap zone right here. That's going to be this area around the Vanuatu region, Solomon Islands area as well. Um, might want to keep an eye on that area here. We're seeing uh, consistent activity west and deeper movement adjusting uh, back here along the plate boundary, leaving this area wide open. But uh, this will probably fill in here soon, if not overnight. Uh, 3.5, that's in the uh, Indonesia Islands area. Philippines still getting hit with some movement down here. Uh, latest earthquake of 5.2 south of the Philippines here, about 177 kilometers deep. Uh, looks like that may be in a portion of the extreme southern edge of the Philippines Trench here. And the Kuro Kamachaka remains quiet. That sleeping giant up there, not showing anything. Rest of the globe, uh... Minimal movement across the area of the Middle East and Mediterranean. Getting some divergent boundary activity here well north of Iceland. That's what we got to watch out for if we see further increase in activity here along this plate boundary. That could spell, uh, you know, maybe the potential there of seeing some further influx of magma from the areas below the subsurface. Got to watch that, though. Um, I know prior to this eruption here in Iceland, uh, about a few days or so, uh, prior to it, uh, there was a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity south here along this plate boundary. And I think that had something to do with uh, kicking things up uh, around the Hagafell and the Grindavik area with this current eruption uh, that's taking place there. All right, let's check out space weather activity, see if we got uh, anything major to chat about here. Um, let's see. Quite a few sunspots here, quite a few numbered sunspots. And, um, well, trying to see here, there's really nothing that's uh, popping out too much here. Uh, this regional sunspot down here continues to grow. Uh, a little bit of complexity showing pretty much amongst all of them, but there's really no specific sunspot out here that uh, uh, I see that may blast off a, you know, a large flare. Maybe this region down here. <laughs> Got a little different core here. We'll keep an eye on it. Either way, active regions here on the Earth-facing side of the sun increasing. The SFI total induct or the uh, um, the uh, energy, so to speak, here um, on the sun. Not really seen too much in the way of flaring activity. 
uh, but again these flares can pop up out of the blue uh, and those sunspots can get pretty complex there um, almost instantly a little sea flare activity it looks like here in the last hour or so uh, no major aurora forecast here for the uh, next couple nights for, uh, the uh, 30 minute aurora which is only uh, up around the Alaska and Canada region that's just a very small percentage not a whole lot of uh, uh, aurora possibilities for now all right storm prediction center here um, well, we got uh, nothing major going on for our severe weather goes. Just general thunderstorm threat out there in the West Coast. That is due to a low pressure system spinning off the California coast. That's going to take a southward turn here and really uh, sit off the coast there for a day or so and spin moisture up from the south into Southern California. Uh, going to get quite a bit of rainfall soaking those guys. Um, and far as storm systems after that, well, it looks like things will remain active as we head into the new year across the area of California. I want to check out the uh, total accumulated precipitation mounts out here. Now this is, uh, this is going over the uh, next couple days or so. Look at that down there in Southern California getting uh, around three to maybe four to five inches there in certain areas around uh, Los Angeles it looks like goodness uh, and then after that there's uh, some more storms coming through and it just it looks like it's going to keep California wet out here uh, I picked up four and a half inches here from the last couple days here of, of the uh, rainfall amount just outside of Chico where I live pretty decent amount for <laughs> just for a couple days goodness uh, so it looks like that's going to remain the uh, the pattern for a little bit here. I'm, I'm very hopeful that this wet, uh, that this winter will be uh, nice and wet. All right, uh, what else is there? Anything major going on in the buoy world? Probably not. If there is, it would be news to me. I'm not really seeing anything major going on out here, as far as any suspicious activity. Aside from that, folks, see what we got going on here across the seismograph stations. They, they look pretty calm out here. Uh, normally, uh, there'll be at least something going on here, but it, it doesn't look like there is anything going on. Pretty quiet conditions. All right, uh, I'm out of here. Make sure you guys subscribe while you're here. Uh, I was just checking out some of the stats on the channel, and there's still a good percentage, probably about 50% of the people here that watch videos are not subscribed to the channel. So uh, jump on board if you want there, folks. Join the channel. Um, we... Uh, Try to cover the majority of the activity out here globally, daily, uh, and all the time. Something major happens. We're always uh, probably one of the first channels out here that jump on board and uh, get the information out. I don't know how many other people were on the uh, Iceland activity, but I jumped on before a lot of big names. Uh, I'm not going to mention the names, but uh, uh, I, I was definitely uh, getting that information out there ASAP. Uh, so join the channel, jump on board there, be a subscriber, and uh, like this video. If you if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Not a, Like I say, not a whole lot going on right now in terms of any major earthquake movement. Uh, could that coincide with the uh, space weather, the lack of space weather activity we're seeing? I don't know. I mean, it's, I'll keep an eye on it. Continue to keep... Uh, a tally in terms of CMEs hitting the planet and the relation to earthquake activity or lack thereof. All right. Have a good night, folks. And we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning, Wednesday. Take care.